So you've studied Euler angles in 415, and that's one of the things I had you review at the beginning of the class. So this, a lot of this should be review. The idea is that we need to be able to identify the orientation of the aircraft in the air relative to the Earth. And so the way that most people do this is with uh, angles called Euler angles. And it shows the orientation of the aircraft up here via three rotation angles from starting at a default orientation at the beginning. And the default orientation is usually somewhere on the Earth, say, I don't know, Greenwich, England. And the nose is pointed north down is the gravity vector, and then that way is east. And then to get to this orientation, we yaw, and I will talk about the positives, we yaw to the right, nose right, uh, pitch up, and then bank to get to the orientation. And it's those three angles that uniquely specify the location of the aircraft. Oh, uh, so you're in England, you shift over to this actual location in the air, and then you go through those rotations to get the orientation. So that gives us the body fixed axis system that we usually work with. So we have an earth fixed axis here. where that's north, this is east, and this is down. And then slate to the CG of the aircraft to its new location here. So I'm trying to copy that so it looks like it's not rotated yet. So that gives you the X1, Z1 axis system. And then the first rotation is psi, and that's about the Z axis, so we're rotating nose right through an angle psi. So we get a new axis system, X2, Y2, and Z doesn't rotate because we're rotating about Z through the angle psi. So Z1 and Z2 are the same. And this is the angle psi here. And what we want to do is get the X1 and X2, so the X1 and the Y1 vectors represented in the new coordinate system X2, Y2. Because that's the transformation we want to know. Well, where is the airplane after it's rotated? So draw a big picture over here, an axis like this. So now we're looking top view down, X1, Y1. And here's our coordinates. So that's the distance X1. And here's the distance Y1. And we need to translate those into the two coordinate system. Like that, so this angle is psi. And that angle is psi. And we take components of X1 and Y1 in the two, coord the two directions. So we resolve this vector into a component over this way and a component like that. So this is gonna be the X, this is gonna be the Y2 component and this is gonna be the X2 component of the original X1. So this would be psi, sine, sorry, not psi, this is X1 sine psi and this is X1 cosine psi. 
And the same thing with y1, we project it onto the x and y coordinate system, the two coordinate system. And so this is gonna be y1 sine psi. And this is gonna be y1 cosine psi. And there's where we get the, the, the new components in the x and y direction. So this is the x2 component of x1, and this is the x2 component of y1. And then this is the y2 component of x1. This is the y2 component of x2 of y1. So we get that x2 y2 is the sum of the two components in the y2 direction. Oh, I got my arrow backwards. That's what the problem is here. Right, this tip to tail, which should have gone up and over that way. Same deal here. I should have gone like that. And so this one's acting backward in the Y2 direction, so we have to have a minus sign on that. The cosines with plus signs on them and the minus sign is on one of the sine, S-I-N terms, because it's always going to be printing backwards. And what happens to Z? It doesn't change. So this should be review. I know you've, it's easy to forget this, but you should have done this in 415 as well. And really, it's just the trig of expressing X1 into these two directions and y1 into these two directions, and that's it. So we get what's called the transformation matrix. We write those equations in a matrix form. And that tells us if you have a vector in the one coordinate system, this is your vector in the two coordinate system. And that's what we want to know. If we have gravity over here in the one coordinate system and we know it's acting toward the center of the earth, which way does it act in the next coordinate system? I guess I was off camera. So here's our airplane, gravity in the X1 coordinate system is here, and we need to know which way it acts in the two coordinate system after the transformation. Oh, thank you. I was wondering where it went. So the book calls this matrix, this transformation matrix, L, Z, Psi, it's the rotation about Z through an angle Psi. And then the next thing that we do is we rotate through theta about Y2. So now we're gonna tip the X axis up through an angle theta. So I'm gonna to try to draw that X2, Y2 coordinate system. There's X2, Y2, Z2. 
And now we're rotating about this axis through theta. So this will tilt up to an X3. Now Z changes to Z through that angle theta. And we get a transformation matrix for that. And I know my figure that is there is not all that great, but you get the idea, right? The airplane pitches nose up through an angle theta. And there's better pictures in the book, so refer to those. And so now in this case, since we're rotating around Y2, that doesn't change. But Zs do change and Xs do change. And so the matrix looks like this. And the book calls this L Y of theta. Rotation about Y of an angle theta. And then finally we do a bank angle rotation phi about X3. And the transformation matrix for that looks like And in this case, the x-axis doesn't change because we're rotating about x. And the book calls that matrix L, X, B. So if you go the whole way, you go earth to one, translate up to one, to two, to three. And then notice I didn't put the four on here because this is now our aircraft body fix system. That's what we call X, Y, Z. So if you go the whole way, you go psi phi to the final orientation up here then that's the full earth to body fix transformation. So again, with the airplane, let me get set up here. With the airplane, we're over here in our, our uh, earth fix axis system. We translate up to the new spot and then we do the psi rotation, and then we do the theta rotation, and then we do the phi rotation to the final orientation. And I did all those in positive direction. Obviously, if you know so that, today. so if we go from Earth to body fix system, we go through psi, then theta, phi, and we write that as the original coordinate system. And then we multiply all of these matrices together in order that we do them to get the new body fixed axis coordinate system. With Euler angles, they all work great, except if theta is 90 degrees, and then you end up with problems. Something called scopes have those gimbals that allow it to rotate different directions. And if they're all lined up in a 90 degree fashion, you get a gimbal lock. 
And here's an easy way to illustrate this. Um, if we do a psi of 90 degrees and a theta of 90 and then no bank, I'm going to show you what that orientation looks like. And it's going to be the same as if we do this. That means that there's that there's not a unique way to get to that orientation. And if you try to invert it, that is if you start here and go backward, the gimbals lock up essentially, because it doesn't know what's the unique mapping one-to-one -one back and forth. But it only happens when theta is 90 degrees. So as long as we're not flying in an airplane that's climbing straight up with both wings, we're good. There are other ways to represent uh, Euler, uh, to represent aircraft orientation, more advanced uh, that deal with this and they're used in flight simulators that allow you to climb straight up. But we stick with these because there's a nice physical representation of the angles. Yaw is real obvious, pitch is a natural thing to think about and so is bank. Uh, so let's do these and we'll start out in this orientation then we'll go 90 degree yaw, so that's to there, right? And then pitch is 90 degrees, and then no bank. So remember that orientation. Now, if we start out back here, we don't do any psi, but we pitch to 90. And then we bank a negative 90, which is right wing up, and we end up with the same orientation. So that's not a unique mapping from Earth to body, and that can cause problems. So a couple more things to talk about. How are we doing on time? We're good. So sometimes we'd like to calculate the flight path. Meaning what the X, Y, and Z locations in the Earth's fixed axis system is a function of time. Like we take off at Wichita and the airplane rotates and climbs and banks and ends up for Denver and it ends up in Denver. What is the X, Y, Z plot of the center of gravity of the flight path of the airplane? Um, usually what we know from the equations of motion, which are all done in the body phase axis system, is we will know the forward velocity, the side velocity, and the downward velocity, because we'll know side slip angle, we'll know angle of attack, and we know how fast we're going. So how do we get back to this? Well, we can transform the body fix axis system through the LEB transformation to get the earth fix velocities, which is gonna be X earth dot Y earth dot and Z earth dot. And then we can integrate those with initial conditions of Wichita mid-continent on takeoff, integrate the equations of motion throughout the whole flight and we can calculate X, Y, and Z. Obviously we need inside here is psi as a function of time, theta as a function of time, and phi as a function of time because how the airplane banks during the flight is gonna determine where it goes. So where do we get those? 
usually in the body fixed axis system, we know the roll rate, the pitch rate, sorry, the roll rate, the pitch rate Q, and the yaw rate R, but how do we get size theta and phi as a function of time? So these come from the, the moment equations. And so we need a transformation that tells us psi theta and phi in terms of p, q, and r. Because psi dot obviously is a yaw rate, right? It's nose going right, so it's got to be related to r somehow. Phi is a bank angle, so a phi dot has got to be somehow related to a roll rate. So there's a direct connection there. <laughs> and the equations that relate those are given in the book. They're called kinematic equations. This is page 100. So this is how you get from P, Q, and R, I dot, theta dot, phi dot, and then you can integrate these to get your Euler angles that go in, into here. You might be saying, well, that looks really complicated. Well, it is, because we've got six equations that are dynamics. We've got three equations for UVW and three equations for P, Q, and R, and then we got this sines and cosines stuff here. So solving all this together as one is a really complicated task. They're nonlinear different equations. They're difficult to solve. These are called the kinematic equations. Dynamics refers to forces acting on masses or moments acting on inertias. Kinematics just relates the, the, the position of something relative to the position in another place. So this is represents rates to these rates, and it doesn't have anything to do with forces acting on masses or moments acting on inertias. Oh, last thing, and then we'll give you back your quiz. Yeah, we're good. You can also see why there's problems with the gimbal lock when theta is 90 degrees when you look at this equation, because tangent the theta shows up in there, and that's sine over cosine. And when theta is 90 degrees, that cosine goes to zero, so that tangent becomes infinite. So that's a mathematical sign that you get gimbal lock. And the same thing happens to secant. All right, I'm gonna give you your quiz back and we're done for the day. Again, reminder, no class on Monday. Uh, make sure you're, you're watching the video and entering, grabbing the, the sheets that show you exactly what to do and explain as far as entering data and go through that.